Good morning everyone, good morning class. This is your Sir Bits at your service and welcome to Bits Academy. <laughs> Hello class! Welcome ulit sa panibagong episode ng Bits Academy. <laughs> so, last time, pinag-usapan natin yung mga quantities sa kinematics. At kung papansinin natin to mga quantities na to, sila ay hindi fix. Sila ay nagbabago. Sila ay nagbabary with time and displacement. Gaya ng velocity at ng acceleration. At kung gagamit tayo ng algebra, bibigyan lang tayo ng mga approximate na mga sagot nito. Eh. So, mas better kung gagamit tayo ng calculus dahil mas bibigyan tayo ng mga exact solutions. Kaya ngayong araw na ito, pag-uusapan natin ang calculus and kinematics. Kaya ano pag-inintay nyo? Tara! So, yung differential calculus o yung pagkuha ng mga derivatives ng function is a method which deals with the rate of change of one quantity with respect to another. Ano daw? So, yun. Kung papansinin natin doon sa definition ng differential calculus, deals with the rate of change. At kung titignan natin doon sa mga definition natin ng mga nakaraang quantities involving kinematics, puro mga rate of change. Unahin natin doon sa velocity. Brad, ano nga yung sinabi mo last video? Velocity also, it is the rate of change noong displacement. So, yun. Narinig nyo? Yung rate of change daw ng displacement, yun yung velocity. So, velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. So, pag kinuha natin yung derivative noong displacement, yun yung ating velocity. Okay? Next quantity ay yung acceleration. Okay? VDR rolling, pasok! Acceleration, it is the rate of change ng ating velocity. So, yun. Rate of change daw ng velocity, yung acceleration. So, acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. A is equal to dv over dt. At sabi ko nga kanina, yung derivative noong displacement, yun yung ating velocity. So, kapag dinobol derivative natin ngayon yung displacement, mapupunta siya sa acceleration. So, acceleration is the double derivative of the displacement. So, puntahan naman natin yung integral calculus o yung tinatawag nating antiderivative. So, from the word itself, antiderivative, kabaliktaran lang siya ng derivative. So, finding an integral is the reverse of finding a derivative. Para lang natin siyang ibabalik doon sa original function. Yung na-derive natin function. Parang ibabalik lang natin, i-reverse lang natin yung process gamit yung integration. So, katulad kanina, yung acceleration, nakuha natin siya gamit yung pag-derive natin o derivative noong velocity. So, ngayon, kung i-reverse natin yung process, pag kinuha natin yung integral ng acceleration, yun yung ating velocity. So, velocity is the integral of acceleration. Same as with the displacement. Yung, dis yung velocity kanina, nakuha natin kapag dinerive natin yung displacement. So, ngayon, babalik rin natin yung process, makukuha natin yung displacement by getting the integral of velocity. So, displacement is the integral of velocity. At kung papansin natin, dahil si velocity, integral ng acceleration, tapos si displacement, integral ng Velocity, so si displacement, double integral siya ngayon ng acceleration. So, displacement is the double integral of acceleration. So, yun yung kanilang mga relationship. Okay, mag-sample tayo. Cho moves in XP lane with its position d in meters given by the following equation. d of t is equal to t cubed minus 2t squared plus 4t plus 5. Now, find its position after 2 seconds. Find its velocity after 2 seconds and find its acceleration after 1 second. Okay, so sagutan na natin yung problem ni Cho gamit yung calculus. So nahin natin si Sketch. Si Gresa pa rin gagamitin. Sketch. So ito si Cho. Tapunta yung XP lane. Yan. So hanapin yung D, V, tsaka yung A. Okay, next is the given. Given natin ay yung function ng ating displacement. D of t is equal to t cubed minus 2t squared plus 4t plus 5. Then required position niya after 2 seconds. Velocity niya after 2 seconds. Acceleration niya after 1 second. Okay? Then equation. Yung ating velocity dd over dt, derivative ng displacement. Then, acceleration, dv over dt, derivative ng velocity. Okay, para sa solution, solution. So, dun sa letter A, nahanap yung position after 2 seconds. So, direct substitution lang tayo doon sa ating function ng displacement. So, dt is equal to 
t cube minus 2t squared plus 4t plus 5. So, direct substitution lang, gawin lang natin 2 yung mga t. So, d of 2 is equal to 2 cube minus 2 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 5. So, we have 2 cube minus 2 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 5. So, we have 13 meters. So, d of 2 is 13 meters. Okay? Tanda tayo sa pangalawa. Ang tanong sa pangalawa ay ang kanyang velocity after 2 seconds. So, gamitan natin ang derivative ng displacement. Yun yung kanyang velocity. Ang displacement natin ay t cube minus 2 t squared plus 4 t plus 5. So, derive natin yan. Sa unang term, yung t cube, gamit tayo ng power rule. So, 3 t squared. Pangalawa, gamit tayo ng constant multiple rule. 4 t and then, part law, constant multiple pa rin, 4. And last, constant rule, 0. So, we have 3t squared minus 4t plus 4 as function ng no? velocity. Pero ang hinahanap is after 2 seconds. So, palitan natin ng 2 seconds. 3 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 4. 3 times 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 4. So, we have 8 meter per second. Okay. And last, Letter C, para sa acceleration niya after 1 second. So, derive lang natin yung function ng velocity. So, ang function natin ng velocity, 3t squared minus 4t plus 4. Derive natin yan, yung 3t squared gamit ang constant multiple rule. We have 6t minus yung 4t, constant multiple pa rin, 4. Then, yung last constant rule, 0. So, we have 6t minus 4 plus 0. Dahil kailangan niya ay acceleration after 1 second. So, 6 times 1 minus 4. So, kailangan pa ba natin na calcule? So, hindi na. 6 minus 4 is 2 meter per second squared. And last, para sa answer, answer natin. Letter A, chose position after 2 seconds is 13 meters. B, chose velocity after 2 seconds is 8 meters per second. And last, chose acceleration after a second is 2 meter per second squared. Okay? So, nasolve na natin ang problema ni Cho. So, ngayon, gamitin naman ulit natin yung calculus para ma-derive yung mga kinematics equation. So, unahin natin doon sa first equation. So, magsisimula tayo doon sa formula natin sa acceleration. Acceleration is equal to dv over dt. Yung derivative ng ating Velocity. Then, cross-multiplication, magkakaroon tayo ng dv is equal to a d t. So, kung mapapansin natin, yung mga variables of integration dito sa kabila ay v, sa kabila naman ay dt. So, integrate natin pareho. Lagyan natin ng lower and upper limits of integration. Dito para sa v, initial velocity hanggang final velocity. Sa kabila naman, dahil time yung variable dyan, so, 0 from rest hanggang t. Okay? So, pag in-integrate natin to, so dahil constant, magkakaroon tayo ng v. Then, yung upper limit natin, vf minus vi. Sa kabila naman, magkakaroon ng, dahil may constant siyang a, at. Okay? Dahil 0 to t, so hindi na natin i-substitute yung 0. So, 80 na lang. So, Vf minus Vi is equal to 80. Now, transpose natin itong Vi. Magkakaroon tayo ng Vf is equal to Vi plus At. Yun ang ating first kinematic equation. Next naman, next equation. So, doon naman tayo sa velocity. So, para makuha yung final velocity, meron tayong derivative ng displacement over dt. dt over dt. So, Mula doon sa ating first kinematic equation, pwede nating i-substitute yung Vf. Gawin nating Vi plus At is equal to dd over dt. Then, tsaka natin cross-multiplication, magpunta yung dt doon sa Vi plus At. dt is equal to dd. Pagpalitin natin. So, dd is equal to Vi plus At dt. Okay? Tsaka tayo gumamit ulit ng integral. Integrate natin, both side. So, dahil sa kabila, dd, yung variable ay d, 0 hanggang d. 0 to d. So, matitira dyan ay d. Sa kapila naman, uh, time, 
yung variable, so 0 to t. So, integrate lang natin to. So, para sa vi, magkakaroon tayo ng vi t. Yung constant rule. Plus, a t. So, pwede tayo gamamit ng power rule dyan. So, a t squared over 2. Ayan. So, for our second kinematic equation, is d is equal to vi t plus 1 half a t squared. So, para dito sa third equation, medyo complex tong third equation kasi wala tayong formula for dv over dt. Unlike kanina, kumamit lang tayo sa acceleration which is dv over dt sa kanyang sa velocity dt over dt. So, ngayon, gamit tayo ng identity. dv over dt is equal to dv over dt. Multiply by 1. So, kahit ano kasing i-multiply mo by 1, same lang itself pa rin. Ganun din kapag dinified. So, pwede akong maglagay dito ng multiply by dt over dt. So, dv over dt is equal to dv over dt multiply by dt over dt. Then next, ayun, itong dv over dt, pwede natin palitan ng acceleration, formula ng acceleration. Then yung dt over dt, inverse siya nung velocity. So, kunin natin yung 1 over v. So, dv over dt is equal to a multiply by 1 over v. Okay? So, next step, cross multiplication, magkakaroon tayo ng v dv is equal to a dd. Saka tayo mag-integral. Integrate natin both side. So, sa kabila, gaya ng variable iv, gamit tayo ng limits ng initial velocity hanggang final velocity. Then, sa kabila, d, 0 hanggang d, yung displacement. So, power rule, magkakaroon tayo ng v squared over 2. Now, dahil meron tayong limits, palitan natin ng vf sa kabila. So, labas natin yung over 2, labas natin yung 1 half, multiply by vf squared minus vi squared. Sa kabila naman, pag integrate natin yan, yung a, magkakaroon lang siya ng d, a, d. Constant rule. So, yun. Z, wala naman ng value yung 0. Pag tinimes mo 0 yan, 0 pa rin. So, yun na lang natira, a, d. Then, in cross multiplication, aangat yung 2 doon, mamamultiply doon sa a, d. So, we have vf squared minus vi squared is equal to 2 a, d. And then, transpose natin yung vi, magkakaroon tayo ng vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2 a, d. D. Yun na yung ating third kinematics equation. Dito sa huling equation natin sa fourth kinematic equation, hindi na tayo gagamit ng calculus. Uh, substitute, substitute na lang tayo. So, from our second kinematic equations, which is d is equal to vi t plus 1 half a t squared, and from the formula ng ating average velocity, which is displacement over time, so pwede nating palitan yung, yung value ng d, which is vi t plus 1 half a t squared. So, average velocity is equal to vi t plus 1 half a t squared divided by t. So, divide natin yung first term ng t, matatanggal yung t, matitira ay vi. Sa kabila naman, second term, matatanggal lang isang t. Cancel lang isang t, so matitira ang 1 half a t. So, v average is equal to vi plus 1 half a t. Then, we have formula for acceleration is change in velocity over time. So, itong, velo itong acceleration dito, palitan natin ng change in velocity, so vf minus vi over time. So, v average is equal to vi plus 1 half Vf minus Vi over T multiplied by T. So, makakancel na lang yung T. So, matitira, average velocity is equal to Vi plus 1 half Vf. So, i-distribute na natin yung 1 half minus 1 half Vi. Okay? So, yun. Common term natin, Vi. Vi minus 1 half Vi. So, matitira, 1 half na lang. Parang 1 minus 1 half, matitira, 1 half. So, V average is equal to 1 half Vi plus 1 half Vf. Then yun, para naman sila may 1 half, pagsamahin na natin, average velocity is equal to Vi plus Vf over 2. Then meron pa tayong isang formula for average velocity, which is displacement over time. So, i-substitute natin yung average velocity doon. Vi plus Vf over 2. Okay, then cross multiplication, so magmumultiply lang siya sa t. Is equal to t. Then, Pagpalitin lang natin, so our fourth kinematic equation is equal to, ito siya, d is equal to vi plus vf over 2 multiplied by t. So, yun, kompleto na yung ating kinematic equation. So, yun, I hope natutunan nyo na kung paano ina-apply yung calculus doon sa kinematics. At kung paano rin yung pag-derive ng mga kinematic equations gamit yung calculus. So, eto nga palang mga na-derive natin kinematic equations. Eto yung mga gagamitin natin dun sa mga susunod nating video, yung application sa kinematics. Once again, this is your service at your service. Class dismissed.